good day, and God bless. In this video, we will discuss the primary instrument, its overall components, and the sound theory that is universal for the guitar. This would include major scale patterns, arpeggios, and basic chord patterns. So join me in sharing my personal approach and methodology regarding sound theory for the guitar. We will first begin by introducing one of my most frequently used custom-made guitars that is called the Double Sphere Guitar. The Double Sphere Guitar is an instrument similar to that of a box guitar, but instead this has two sound holes to it. Also, this instrument is primarily a classical acoustic type likened to that of a travel backpacker guitar. The higher sound hole is located on the top corner and the lower larger sound hole is in the normal centered position of the guitar. These holes are designed in this particular way to guarantee a reasonable audible sound for a box guitar. This is said because the body of the guitar is narrow, unlike the conventional guitar models. So adding another sound hole to the body somewhat serves as a creative solution to this problem of volume. The type of wood is also a very important aspect to the overall texture of the sound. The wood of this instrument absorbs the vibration of the string when it is struck, and it amplifies the vibration that can be heard throughout the sound hole. Most widely used types of wood used specifically for guitar bodies are mahogany, cedar, and spruce. However, there are other types of wood that can be used in the construction of the guitar body like maple, walnut, and rosewood, just to name a few. I myself have been using acacia and poplar wood for some of these models and they produce a fine tone and volume to the overall sound quality as well. The general structure of the guitar is as follows. The head. The machine pegs or tuning pegs. These are specifically for tuning the individual strings of the instrument. The nut. The nut positions each string and lifts the strings to prevent them from resting on the surface of the neck so they are functional and can vibrate properly. The frets. The frets help us to accurately play the desired tones. The idea is to play somewhat midway between the frets to get a clean sound but sometimes just behind the fret can produce a clean sound too. The neck. This is self-explanatory. This gives a scale length of the amount of octaves that can be played on this instrument. The body. The body supports the overall sound absorption of the instrument as well as its sound quality. The double sound holes, or double sphere. The double sound holes provide a decent volume compensation to this instrument due to the fact that it is narrow in its body. The bridge area. Usually the string attachment and the bridge are one unit, but for this model, the bridge is what we call a floating bridge. This means that we can just slide the bridge anywhere we wish to adjust the tuning any way we desire to. While this may produce a false harmonically sound tuning, it is used and pretty interesting in its functionality. Just think of it as the transpose button on today's keyboards, or like the purpose of the capo device on guitars. Some people have a preference for certain playing methods and positions. So the floating bridge enables the player to maintain their positioning on their instrument regardless of the changes in key tunings. I myself prefer being flexible to any key position because it seems to enhance the skills of the player as well as the overall understanding of the theory of the instrument itself. Now, regarding the false harmonic situation that comes with the floating bridge, this means that for those who do solos and who like to play up and down the neck of their instrument, the tuning after the 12th fret will not match the previous frets. Here's what I mean. When playing an F in the first octave, which will be your first fret on the first string, it will not be the F beyond the 12th fret, though the note is supposed to mirror the first octave positioning. So your 13th fret will not match your first fret. Both supposedly being the F note, it will not be both F. 
the first octave will be registered as an F note, but the 13th fret will not. This is not the way it should go, and that is the result of the floating bridge. And this is what we mean when we say it is falsely uh, harmonic in its nature. The heel. This particular unit fastens the guitar neck to the body and supports accurate alignment of pressure on such an angle that the strings have perfect vibrational freedom and the proper sound is produced.